Okay, good morning, guys. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, well, sitting in your PJs, maybe. So we're going to get after it here. Uh, just do some brief intro. Again, it's Michael Gandy. Um, as always, captain of the uh, captain of the plane today, my co-pilot, Michael Gaskill, programmer, developer extraordinaire, sitting at the ready over here on the side, ready to... You got that chat box. Um, we keep the, we keep everybody's mics off, uh, and that, that's, that's nothing against you, but, um, some earlier ones, just, you know, the dogs barking, uh, gets a little bit noisy. So take advantage of the chat. Um, if you got messages, uh, questions, uh, I'm sorry, messages, not the chat. Michael just, Michael just hit me with a stick, said do message, message, not chat. Um, but yeah, that's where you can send in your questions because um, we're we're going to try to get after today. I mean, we're we'll, we'll do a little bit of a uh, little bit of talking. If you guys have heard me on some other ones, you see the bloviating. Uh, <laughs> so I, I I'll try to keep that to a minimum. We've got it. We've got a couple of fun ones today um, that we're going to get into in a little bit. Uh, but. So we sent you all the data files. So if anybody is on here, now I was just sending data files up until 20 minutes ago for some late registrants, no problem. We just want to make sure though, if you're logged in and, and you did not check your email and get uh, those data files so you can play along, really helpful to be able to dive into these things, uh, you know, follow together, um, especially for some people that, uh, just got mapped, maybe just sent in a mapping request. Um, you know, this gives you an opportunity to test out the platform with some data. We'll walk through it together, um, and we're we're, we're going to show you that uh, even even old Ninja Master here been slicing and dicing on the platform for eight months or so. You know, over a year in development and stuff like that. But I'll show you how even the old Ninja Master sometimes has to uh, run his head into a wall because I make mistakes. And then I have to step back, grab a cup of coffee, think about things, wonder what I'm doing wrong. And then uh, you see the proverbial light and uh, figure it out. So I I'm going to show you some of the, I'm going to show you one of those this morning where, uh, you know, sometimes you got to jump outside that tunnel. And, I, and I'm guilty of it, too. I'm an appraiser just like you guys, 26 years, boots on the ground. So I, I certainly get set in my ways, look at things a certain way, um, the same things we've been doing intuitively. Uh, for a long time. Um, so you, just to start off again, if this, if you're a new beginner, really new, 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 and you haven't, um, you know, we're not going to go into all the features and functionalities uh, in every, every webinar. Literally, we could chew up an hour, hour and a half uh, just, just doing the features and functionality and, and not even start to touch on the advanced. So what I want you to do is uh, at the bottom of any page, any page on the uh, on the Gandysoft uh, website, you'll see a YouTube link. Now we we're rump, we're we're humping that thing up, man. We've 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 literally got probably you know eight, ten hours of quality content, uh, in, including what I say for if you're a new 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 beginner and you want to know. Some of the basic functionalities. Um, where's where's the best one, Michael? For the it's that hour ten one, right? Right here. Yeah. Here here's here's your bellwether for the for the new people, just diving in statistical modeling with pairs. Uh, it's called Gandy Soft Pairs Features and Functions. Hour and ten minutes. That's that's an awesome functions and features. We we I think we do an analysis in there. Um, but we definitely deep dive into some of the features and functions. Um, maybe not all the advanced stuff, but that's stuff that will progress as we start to, uh, you know, get our get our battle base going uh, when we start really starting to get move forward. Uh, your next one uh, that I would recommend would be uh, last last Saturdays. We kind of we spent a decent amount of time, or excuse me, excuse me, two Saturdays ago. I'm losing my head. Uh, this January 24th, 2015, that was a good one. That's two hours, and, and we chew in, again, that's one where you can start off 
um, because we, we really do some detail on the features and functionalities. And you're not going to get that uh, right now, today, or going forward. I mean, we, did, we have to reach a point where we can't chew up an hour and 15 uh, hour, hour and 15 on the basic features every time because uh, the people that are active and using the platform, we really want to stretch out those statistical muscles, uh, you know, dive deep dive into some analysis. Last week, um, by the way, so that's this, the first one will be the features and functions for a newbie. Uh, the January 24th, 2015, definitely your second, uh, you know, stab at it. Uh, it, after you finish that one, but a lot of comp, uh, you know what? Lots of people. Uh, the uh, the January thirty first one last weekend. We had lots of <laughs> lots of people um, like that one. That we we get into hardcore one in in uh, the second analysis on that one. We really show you what you can do with this platform, the flexibility and the power. Um, and it's it's wild. I mean, we that one we took on a a nasty. Don't want to always do, you know. Some 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 people like to do that. You know, show you the easy peasy every time. Uh, we 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 dusted off the brain uh, about an hour fifteen into that webinar. You'll get into the second test, uh, which was ugly, and and we show you how to handle ugly, and we got that thing uh, smoothed out to where it was awesome. So that's a good one, and we're gonna we're gonna drop box or we're gonna post. Uh, Michael's going to post the data files for at least the January 31st one and starting today. So if you get any friends, you want to point them in this direction. Um, here in the very short, short term, they'll be able to log into the, to the recorded webinar and, and be able to pull down data and follow along, which would be really good for people that just got to start. Um, so before we get going, just some brief stuff. You know what, uh, Michael's Michael's musings, his his words to live by: analyze your market, not your comps. I'm the other Michael. I'm talking about Gaskill, the programmer extraordinaire. Analyze your market, not your comps. Um, you know, comprehensive. You're being required to do statistical analysis uh, of a market environment. Your market analysis. Is, is not necessarily going to match your 1004 MC. That's just a reality. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, when you talk about, you know, you know, math is not statistics. Statistics is math based. But, you know, we've gone over this, you know, oodles of time. That's why paired sales has got kicked in the teeth the last five years because, you know, it's been, it's been, it's been mainly uh, thought of in the micro set of data, you know, microcosm of sales. Just using your comparable properties, there's no. You're not going to get statistical data out of just analyzing your comps. So analyze your market, not your comps. We're going to go into that. I mean, today when we deep dive into these, I'm still going to take a second and jump, uh, jump with you guys into uh, into my MLS, and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna we're gonna pull data and we're gonna pull market areas, and I'm gonna show you on this first one that we're gonna come right flying out of the gate. Old, uh, I make mistakes, and you know what? I did this. I just did this appraisal literally three day, three days ago, and I made a mistake. Had to get a cup of coffee, dust off the brain, and figure out what I was doing wrong, and then I came back at it uh, hard. And I'll show you. We 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 tackle that. Um, I had a few calls this week. Uh, you know, people bothered by that CU. Uh, we'll we'll we'll. You're the professional. You know, we give you all the tools at your disposal. Um, you know, don't worry about some robo computer. You're the professional with geographical competency. No, there's nobody validating the outputs on that robo computer. So, uh, we give you all the tools to be the professional. And it's wild what you can do when you just dive in and engage. You know, you know what's credible, uh, and, and we give you all those tools. I um, mean, just again, but you know, to start, we've had a lot of people there. You know, there's no magic one solution fits all. I mean, there's no magic bullet. You click a button and everything's, you know, just going to be uh, awesome. Um, you know, there's other methods. This is a method, proven, paired sales analysis, iterative method. You know, it's uh, 
wonderful tools. There's other tools, regression programs. There's good ones and there's bad ones. I, I, I mentioned this before. There's a squirrely one out there with the best, best hook in the wor world, you know, called automated. And that's sexy. I mean, I, everybody wants that. I mean, automatic. That just sounds awesome. So uh, that that's squirrely. There's good regression programs out there. If you want to uh, look at some of those, uh, you know, there's you've got uh, StatWing, wonderful interface. Um, uh, it's a good regression platform. But you you navigate that platform. You're not trusting some number flying out of a black box, uh, which is the difference. Uh, you got David Braun's AVT. Uh, He's been an appraiser 30 years plus, uh, built by an appraiser for an appraiser. Uh, they all have their pluses and minuses, uh, but, you know, by all means, you know, this is a method. It, it, it might not be the method that you choose. Um, we think once you discover the power and the flexibility that you have in this platform versus uh, uh, other, other regression programs that are pitching to you right now, you'll see the difference. Now, if you're a whiz-bang at you know, SPSS, you know, you can go out there, pay fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars and, and long hand it for four hours of configuration and you can do a lot of similar things in modeling um, that this platform accomplishes, a different method a little bit, but uh, pretty much similar uh, flexibility. So again, you know, you're the professional, you're in control. Don't be afraid to engage. Uh, we'll talk. We'll talk later. Getting. I want to get us going. Get us out of the gate here. We'll talk later, though, about uh, you know where where the profession might be going in your opinion. I mean, I I, I think as an appraiser, I think we're just uh, coming out of a pretty dark period here, uh, where we've been getting kicked around for a couple of years. I think uh, with the active professional base of appraisers has gone down. I think we get down to any kind of uh, normalcy in the market overall I, th I think this bodes well for us you know we're, we're in a situation now where you're you know you have to show your work you got to show some statistical uh, analysis comprehensive analysis that that doesn't mean that you know you can't whip out a, a well done Excel spreadsheet I mean that that's fine it's just we're in an environment where you're gonna have to do statistical analysis to show your work I think that's going to be a bellwether to make us uh, I think that's going to lead to actually a better profession going forward financially. Um, you know, when you start showing that, that kind of comprehensive analysis, uh, especially we'll show you what you can show in, in pairs, uh, it's pretty powerful stuff. It, it diffuses a lot of problems because in order to argue with somebody with a boatload of data, uh, you got to have data that's better, and it's pretty tough. So... Um, Again, uh, some of you guys are new, maybe watched a few things, um, but again, we you know we we understand the deluge of of people with CU. We did not launch this product. We we've been in development well over a year. Um, CU wasn't even a thought. Uh, it just so happened that our time to launch was around that time. We're not really happy about it. But we, we get lots of calls. People are scrambling for a solution. They're scared, nervous. Uh, so we're, you know what? We've got the Pairs Free For Now program. We're not charging. We're not even going to think about charging until March 2nd. And even then, you might get an email saying, hey, you know what? We're going to give you a little bit longer, and then we're going to kick on the e-com. Why are we doing that? We're trying to give you time. I realize I, I, I do appraisals uh, still active daily. Um, you know, sometimes it takes time. Is there a learning curve? Sure. We want you to get comfortable. We don't want anybody buying this product unless you see the value and the power of it. Seriously, we, you know, if, 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 if you don't want the program for what it is, uh, that, that's, that, that's all up to you. But when you start to discover and engage, and if it takes you 30 days, 40 days to get that comfort level, uh, we'll, we'll put our money where our mouth is. Go ahead and use the program. Get used to it. Uh, engage. Be a professional. Uh, you know, get into modeling. Understand it's not complicated after, you know, is there a learning curve? Sure, but it's not complicated. Once once you realize the flexibility that you have, we're confident that uh, we're the solution for the professional. So again, don't worry about that trial. If you just got on, maybe you're just waiting for a mapping still. 
Um, we got a few more roll-ins this week. Uh, don't worry about the trial. You, you, there's no 14-day. We're not even doing that right now, at least till March 2nd. We, we haven't even talked about it. So, you know, I guess at some point here pretty soon we better. Uh, so let's get after it. So I want you guys to at least, uh, we're going to dive into one. So, um, again, I want you to, I want you to have those, uh, if you guys don't have those test files, if you were a late registrant, I think I covered everybody, please message to Michael right now and he'll email you those uh, files. But if you did, um, I, wanna, I want you to go log in to uh, gandysoft.com, get in your account. Um, and actually, we're going to do some precursor stuff to it. Well, actually, I want no. Let's go. Let's let's go ahead and load the data, and then we'll go to my MLS. And we'll do the precursor stuff, and I'll show you uh, the error of my ways. How even the Ninja Master here at the Slice and Dice Machine can can make a mistake. Have to have to step back, grab that cup of coffee, and shake my brain loose, and come back and hit it hard and, and see the difference. Um, so go to uh, create a new analysis. So now. We're going to go ahead and name this test one. Now I sent you, I sent you two data files. Uh, one of them, one of them says incorrect, and then one of them says correct. So the first one we're going to load is incorrect. So I don't want you getting ahead of the game to correct. Um, so we were single family home, and just to keep apples to apples, um, I praised it on the fourth. So yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> Ah, and I just got that out late, late last night because I was, uh, I was being dumb. I'm going to show you. Not, 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 not that you're not going to make these mistakes. I just want to show you that, you know, I've been banging around on this thing for eight months. Trust me, I make mistakes too. I'm trying to broaden your understanding of things. So, uh, let's name this test one, uh, single family, and put in the uh, February fourth, 2015, and click save. Okay, once you've done that. Um, we're going to go to that blue uh, change button for data. Now, so any anywhere you guys are at, I mean, I, I see I see a bunch scattered around the country. We're doing these early ones to be west east coast friendly. I wouldn't want to chew up all your Saturday. We get it. Um, so very important though, right here, your source needs to say Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. Why? Because I gave you data sets map for Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's all go. I want apples to apples again. I want you to, before we even load this data, I want you to go to account. I want you to go to profile. And this is important. You know, if we don't have the same rule sets or the same, uh, you know, same, <laughs> same stuff applying, we're going to get different numbers. And I don't want you guys saying, I'm getting different numbers. Edit profile because you can run this, you know, 20 ways from Sunday, you can get the same number every time as long as you're using the same rule set. I want you to edit preferences. So this is key. Calculate three-quarter bath. I got it set as a three-quarter bath. You might have defaulted it to a full. I like three-quarter bath. I think, I don't know, it, it actually to me seems to manage better than full. I don't know why. I mean, it's data. I do know why. But so make sure you're at three quarter bath. At calculate three quarter, three quarter. Preferred analysis setting. Make sure you have it. It should be defaulted to solve fully. Outlier filter should be trim. And your parameter should be 2.5. Let's just get that out of the way. After you've made those changes, just click save. And then you, you can go. At the top of your now recent pairs analysis, you should see your test one. Once you click on that, we can go into where I was going to tell you the data change button. And if you guys, listen, if you're new and you're kind of clunky around on the platform, just, just send a message to Michael. I can slow down a little bit. We, we can segue into some kind of topic. So let's go into that change. Uh, we got source, Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. That's key. We're going to click upload. Now you guys aren't even going to think about this eventually. I mean, this is just the, the easy peasy stuff. 
So we're gonna we're first thing we're gonna load is we're gonna load first incorrect test one. Very important. Don't don't load up correct test. We want first incorrect test. I want you to find that file. Uh, click the upload, find that file, and double click it or or click it and then click open, and then it'll load up the uh, data file. I just want to have it loaded for you guys. So this this will table and index the data. We've talked about it a million times. All this is doing is getting ready to isolate variables in the uh, initial analysis stuff. But you, you can see right off the bat, I mean, there should be an alarm bell. Well, if you're new, you might not know. I don't spend too much time analyzing my data in here because you can do it much better in the submarket filter inside the platform, which I'll show you, which a lot of you may know. Um, but there should be some alarm bells right off the bat going, you, oh, 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 boy, we got 21 sales. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be bad. We've, you know, I've told you guys, I've showed you. We've got ridiculous good results on 13 properties, but the data was very correlated, clean. That, that's the key. We've got, we've got great results. We've got crazy good results on five properties. We solved for four variables, which sounds ridiculous. I mean, who can do that? We did that, but that data was very correlated and clean. You know, if, if, if you can get 40, 50 sales, and if you've got a hodgepodge of deviation and variances in there, um, it's just a function of data. It's going to be dirty. So uh, after you have loaded, you see your data table, go ahead and let's click Analyze Pairs. Now, I don't want you to even look at this. Remember, I keep, I keep stressing this point to you guys. Don't, don't look at the first thing that jumps off the page. Now, that being said, we're not going to get much good to jump off the page, which I'll go through, and I'll show you the error in my way. Um, so just don't pay attention to even on your own analysis. Because it's a process. You've got to prune through your variable list. You've got to identify things that might have populated in your data set that are goofy. Uh, you know, there's things you can do, changing tolerances, looking at the layout of your data. Um, so just you got to remember the initial analysis, this, this is all noise. It doesn't even matter. It might jump out of the gate great and make you feel good, but do not uh, worry too much about the uh, first stuff that jumps off the page. It's really not relevant. I mean, you're going to have to dive into some modeling. Now, yeah, yeah, you get, <laughs> you know, you get 100, 200, you know, 300 sales in a tracked environment or something or a market area that's, uh, you know, pretty robust, uh, filtered down pretty decent to a sub-market. Oh, yeah, you're going to open this up and you're just going to, you know, happy dance. I mean, it's, it's just going to be party time. You're going to spend 35 seconds in the whole platform and that's just assigning your adjustments and printing your validation page. But that's the law of numbers. So don't pay attention to this, um, especially if, you, if you're not in a huge or, or a large data set because this, this doesn't mean nothing yet. We're not even going to pay attention. But I'm going to show you the error of my ways. So we're going to, I should have had this log, logged in for you guys. Uh, I'm going to go to my uh, Glaver. People say I say that wrong. It's supposed to be Galvar. I've got some good friends here in town. Okay, so someone missed uh, what I clicked. So what we did was we, we went to create a new analysis. Uh, I'll just show you real quick before I get into it. I don't want somebody to get lost at the jump. You know what? So, yeah, I'll go to home. I want you to click create a new analysis when you're logged in at gandysoft.com. I want you labeling it test one. Property type was single family and the effective date was February 4th, this Wednesday. It's where the Ninja Master made a, just a critical error, but he figured it out. And I'm going to show you the error, and then I'm going to show you how I figured it out. So click save after you put in the details. The next button is that data change button. Now all we're doing here is I want you to click your source, Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors. Use the drop down box, choose that one. Upload the data. I want you to upload first incorrect test. First incorrect test 0207. 
15 or something, but it's first incorrect test. Once you once the day the data is tabled, just click on that blue hyperlink at the upper right hand corner that says analyze pairs right above the download box. And then you get to that initial analysis, which I told you, don't pay attention to nothing on there. We we haven't even done any kind of management here. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you the error. We're going to recreate this wheel, show you where I make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. Well, you're going to make, you're going to get better. Let's say that. It's like a sport. You know, more practice, the better you get. You know, they, you know, seriously, I regard, I regard myself as a ninja. I've been on go to meeting with a ton of you people now. Uh, different markets. I don't have to know your markets. I, I don't. You don't have to know anybody's market. Uh, data, numbers are always relative. You can look at sales prices per square foot, and you, you can get a feel for everything that's going on in the market. Now, maybe if you're dealing with some San Francisco Bay Area view stuff, you know, that's a little bit different to, of a beast. But I do these all the time. People call, you know, hey, I, oh, man, this is, this is crazy. What do I do? What do I do? You know, sometimes, and I'm slow walking it, talking to people, figuring it out. But, you know, we might be able to mash that thing out five, ten minutes. And that's, and that's me slow walking it. So you're going to get to that point. But I want to show you, I still make mistakes. And that's, that's, just, that's just our tunnel vision as appraisers. It's not a bad thing. I mean, after so many years of doing something, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're going to get set in your ways to a degree. So I was single family residence. This is my subject property. We're just going to talk about it real quick. I just want to show you how I made a mistake. I don't want to, I want to give you some context. And I can't remember my exact street name or I mean street address. I'm Olam. That's me right there. 1493803. All right, so I got a new construction. I'll show you guys. Uh, you know what? I'll go ahead and give you a little bit of air review. Sometimes that's a little bit too noisy for people. But at least it gives you some context. Okay, so I'm a new construction, small tract over here. Uh, I mean, they, you know, I think the builder just picked up a street, you know, probably 10 acres, chopped it up, made one street of houses. Not, not, a, not a tract of any kind of significance. I think there's literally 12 houses on the street. So we're talking small. But it's a it's a local builder, Storybook Homes, um, nice house. But you know, this area right here, and I'll, I'll give you the hybrid. Um, you know, a lot of ranch custom. Now, when you get down into here, if you get south of Cactus, you get what's called the uh, small master plan development called uh, Southern Highlands. Anybody in Vegas that might be on board right now, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so that's definitely, you know, <laughs> at least in my view, you know, I'm not messing around with master plans out in, out in this stuff. But so you got a lot of, a lot of custom ranch stuff out here, but you, you can see, you can see pepper tracks. So, I mean, there's tracked environments out here too, but, uh, you see a lot of vacant land. That's because you got a lot of ranch stuff, which just so you know, you got that up here too. And believe it or not, these areas flow. Now, this is a major roadway, Blue, Blue Diamond Road. It is a major roadway. I'm not going to say it's not. But there's, you know, we've got Passover streets all along. But nonetheless, I'll show you my mistake. So I was a um, 1,569. It says 1,567. I sketched it out 1,569. Uh, square foot new construction on your typical, you know, 5,000 square foot lot. So the first thing I did is I said, okay, you know, I got I to gotta define my area. You know, that's, that's what I wanted to do first. I said, okay, uh, I got to get some data for pairs, you know, get the, get the engine to run. So 
and and here's here's part of my mistake, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I I do the same thing you guys do. So I define my area. I backstopped it to that master plan. I'm not getting into that. Anything above Jones is not master plan. This is all. Actually, I could have swung over here, but I didn't. That doesn't matter. I handle this as a mistake regardless. I want to show you how data is so important, how you pull it, because I made it difficult on myself, and then I'll show you when I you know, saw the light and said, what the heck was I thinking, and did it the right way. I'll show you how, how much easier it is on yourself when you do it right way the first time. Saves you time. Time equals money. All right. So I defined it as this. I stopped at that major street. Even though I just told you, all the way up to here, it's all the same. I mean, at Warm Springs, maybe you can make the case that, you know, back over here, it's all custom. Um, but there's still a lot of pepper tracks in here, too. But no, no, no. I had a major roadway, so, you know, oh, crossing that, crossing that barrier. Tried to keep it tight. So also I was a one story. A lot of these tracked in environments out here were two stories. So here we go. You know, I I, <laughs> I make mistakes just like everybody. So I defined a SFR as my search type, uh, one story. You know, old habits hard to shake. Um, I still put in eleven. I should have filtered in in the. Uh, in the platform, but you know, trying to do 1004 MC2, you know, I put 1177 and 1961, that was plus or minus 25% square foot. And I was new construction, so I did uh, 2004 new, or, or more, excuse me. So I had 27, including, including all the listing types. Now, if you want to just get down to solds. Twenty one. Now this is gonna be a problem, especially new construction. I can tell you everything over here ain't new construction. And we've got a variable uh for new construction. Glaver specifies it, so guess what? That ghost feature that you've never been able to figure out why those new construction sell so much higher than uh resales. Yeah, you can measure it out now, guys. If 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 your MLS has that functionality. If not, I'm gonna show you in the next uh in the next test that we're gonna do. Um I'm going to show you how to augment your data set, where you can clean it, where this platform will accept your data set uh, with, with you creating a new variable. So I'll show you that. But anyways, so now go back to your pairs uh, panel, to that initial analysis, which is, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you know, probably right here, should have left it. But click on the Stats tab. Just want to show you, you know, I'm not making it up. 21 records. Remember, 21 sales. It doesn't count the listings, pennies, and contingents because we don't use those in the analysis for adjustment extraction. Because uh, until they close, they're just not really relevant. Um, you list your house for a million dollars and you'd be worth 50 grand. There's no law against it. Uh, free market. God love you. Maybe you get somebody who from Hawaii. It's got a bag full of money. Anyway. So here's our data, 21 properties. That's not, that, that's definitely, and we've got that new construction, which, you know, hey, that doesn't seem that maybe necessarily out of the ballpark. You never know. I mean, I'm a 240,000-ish, somewhere around there, um, sale price. You know, guest house. Uh, oh, by the way, I put in one more filter. I just want to show you. I did put in one more filter because there is custom homes out here. Uh, and just to show you, I'm not playing fast and loose. Because I did this, I just did it. I showed you, well, the date we put on there. I did lot size less than 12,000. Why? I don't need to be messing around with any custom homes inside my little small tract. But it still rendered that 21. So I just wanted to show you that. So guest house, you got to really be suspect right off the jump. Guest house? In, in a tract environment, well, yeah, what we've done is we've probably associated a casita feature. But you got to be real careful about that casita feature because this is where you get into data cleaning. 
uh, if if they list it as a casita in one field, but then they also record uh, it in the livable area, well, you're you're double dinging. Now, right now, it's showing no solution. So the first thing we would be doing, and I'm going to do this real quick because this was a mistake file. I mean, this was me being tunnel vision. But I want to show you. I do the same thing you guys do when you call in here. Oh, I need help. And then I show you the light, and you're like, wow, look how easy that was when you when you, when you step back for a second. So let me go to that. I'm going to highlight the guest house, and then I'm going to click on the stats tab. That's going to show us that there's three properties in this data set that have what they're calling a guest house. Now, I got two options. Um, I can kick it here, which just says it's not a significant factor. Uh, and then they can still use the records for analysis. And as long as it's not in the variable list, it'll just do paired sales. Uh, I can go into the submarket change, which I'll show you in a little bit. We could remove it totally, and that'll remove every one of those records from any kind of analysis. Yes, that's probably dangerous because we're already down to 21 properties and we haven't even started cutting or putting filters in. But what I want to look at is, yeah, see this additional livable area. So now typically what will happen is, you know, we map fully. Now we'll allow you to solve for the lump, which would be the guest house, if it's not, hopefully, you better clean your data, make sure it's not included in your livable area. Or you have the option if your MLS lists it as a, a variable separately per square foot, for example, you could add additional livable area. And all you would do is go to the add a variable drop down. And I want you guys to add additional livable area. And there's a 20% tolerance uh, function in there. That just means, you know, hey, 350 square foot casita, you know, 400, you know, 20 square foot or 400 square foot, that reasonably the same. At least we can use those to compare, extract out other adjustments. Tolerances still get addressed. Told this many times. You can open up the carburetor and put 100% tolerance on these things, and those tolerances still get addressed in the iterative method. So don't worry about that. But since we added additional livable area, now go to guest house, and now let's drop box, uh, drop the, the drop down box on strategy down to none. Okay, so when we click update, it's going to include additional livable area per square foot, and it's going to remove guest house. You can, you can start pruning a bunch of them here before you hit update. But now I want you to click update. Now, look, I'm like a pit bull on a bone. I'm still trying to hold on to see if I can get an analysis out of 21 properties in a new construction market, which is ugly. Ugly. I mean, right out of the gate now, you can see, okay, well, this is this, this not logical. You mean tell me, you know, $226 a square foot for the, uh, for the accessory unit? versus 93 bucks for the main uh, dwelling that, that's you know that that doesn't make sense that's not practical I got lot size just you know bizarre uh, literally bizarre I mean, you buy an acre out in this part of town for you know 140 150 you know for an acre maybe 200 if you know if it's maybe section line or something uh, new construction you know come on 20 percent I, I, I can get on board with 10 percent sometimes for premium. I, it's just data. No solution on pool. Uh, you see, this is just ugly. I mean, this is ugly. Why is it ugly? Well, we know why it's ugly. We've got 21 properties, and the majority of them are, uh, there's not much new construction. Let's, let's show you that. Click on your built, and I want you to click the stats tab. So look at that. The majority of the property, there's only three that are new construction. I mean, the majority of them are at 2007. So we got, you know, and I've only got a four-year tolerance. I mean, if I want to open that bad boy up, my whole spread is 10 years. I want to put in, I want you to change year built to a 10-year tolerance. Basically, you're telling the platform now that, Okay, for all intents and purposes, we'll call your built the same within 10 years to measure out a different variable in paired sales. But we're still in the iterative method going to come back and figure out a year built uh, value. And I'll show you. I want you to click update. Everybody says, oh, that, that's not good. You're saying 10 years don't mean anything. Oh, yes, the method still works, my friend. Look at that. It's still uh, measured out 
a per year at 1825, even though we gave it a 10-year tolerance. I don't want you guys to be afraid of that tolerance. This does not have to be the exact tolerance that you assign to yourself for not making an adjustment on your appraisal. This is the tolerance for your statistical model. This is not. And, and, and those tolerances, unlike when you don't make an adjustment on, the, on your appraisal grid, uh, these tolerances actually get addressed. I mean, they, they just don't disappear. I mean, the method still goes back and still finds values for those tolerances. But let's look, let's highlight lot, lot size and we'll look at the stats on that. We got 3,049 to, so, you know, I mean, we could even open up that, you know, let's change that to 1,500 square feet tolerance. All I'm doing is trying to open up the carburetor because I got little data. If you get limited data, you might sometimes realize that playing with those tolerances gets stuff. Now, look, I'm playing with tolerances. I'm getting no solutions, no solutions, still counterintuitive. My accessory unit is higher price per square foot than my livable area. Nothing on a pool. I got one record in there with a pool. I mean, you know, this is just ugly. I, I, think I, I think I even played my tolerance on livable area. I want you guys to go to that. Change that to 5%. 5%. And as you can see, this is just a garbage. It's not garbage. It's a matter of my data. I, now, first of all, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 variables in my data set. 10 variables, or excuse me, that we're trying to solve for in a data set of 21 properties. Now, typically, Typically, um, and we're not opponents of regression at all. Uh, I've used regression uh, off and on for years. I mean, I, I'm not always happy with it. Sometimes, you know, it's okay. But I've used regression. But typically in a regression situation, you need 15 to 20 representations per variable, typically, for, a comp for any kind of confidence factors which you have to deal with, arbitrary rules and regression. We don't have those rules. I've talked about that too. We don't have to worry about residuals or base or none of that junk. Every, we're, we're isolating variables. We're solving. Every property has a base. Residuals, yeah, well, when you get into the iterative method, it doesn't matter. You're, we're refining down the adjustment. So different method, different results. But I just want to show you that we're trying to solve for 10 variables out of a 21 property data set where your typical regression program is probably going to, with any kind of confidence, kick out one, maybe two. I mean, you might be able to manipulate it and, and get some uh, some adjustment uh, that you might not scream about um, three or four, but you know the confidence levels aren't going to be there. I mean, they're probably going to say not significant or stuff like that. And that's just a matter of you know that's just a matter of uh, you know the data. So I played around. Now I've already opened up tolerances. It's just ugly. And so at this point, you know what? Uh, yeah, the old Zen master here. I beat my head against the wall and I gave up for a little bit. Uh, I'm not a quitter though. I actually took like a respite. Let's call that. <laughs> I took a little hiatus. Had some coffee. Thought about it. Uh, shake, shake the brain loose. Shake the brain loose. So now I want you to go. Because we're going to give up. We're going to move forward. I, I, we're going to have fun today. Because this right here, you know, when you start looking at it, and you know what, that's why I didn't, didn't quit. Because I looked at it and said, okay, good Lord, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to solve for new construction, some pretty significant stuff here on 21 properties. Now, that's just being silly. So I just, needed, I just need to remind myself of the things I keep telling you guys to do. Uh, but I did it. So in the upper left-hand corner, now you'll notice a pattern here, guys, in the in the program. Upper left-hand corner, left goes back a panel. Upper right-hand corner goes forward. So this is back. So I want you to go to the import data screen again. We're going to go back. Why are we going to go back? Because I just totally massacred my data collection. That's why it's so important. I want to show you what I did, and then we're going to do this again together. 
and then you guys are going to be like, oh, man, I, I did what I tell you not to do. I made it difficult on myself. So I want you to, I want you to, before we load the data, just stay here at this screen, Source Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors, and then you've got your data tabled. I'm going to hop back to MLS. So I'm going to show you what I did. So I start thinking about it. I remember, I'm just like you guys. I get tunnel vision. Listen, I, if we could do everything statistically supported on a 1004 MC, sometimes you can. Good tracked environment. Like I said, you get 100, 100 records, you know, 200 properties in a, a sub market of, of, you know, fairly clean data and similar. Holy smokes, man. We, you know, we've. <laughs> We've knocked out 12, 15 variables in a set like that. I mean, and we're talking, you know, bang on numbers that you would smile as an appraiser and be like, oh, yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's what I want to see. Um, so, you know, or if it's clean data, you can get good stuff, but you just got to think about it sometimes, and I make these mistakes too. So I just told you earlier that, you know, this is a suburban area too with peppered with all these tracks. Um now there's that major boundary, and I know like an appraiser, you know, we like to, ah, that's it. Just like, you know, 15, cro crossing Interstate 15. Okay, that might be a little bit of a no-no, even though there, this is Feeder Street. This is a Feeder Street. Uh, this is a Feeder Street. I mean, you, there's access. It's not like it's landlocked. Now you don't have your next one until you're down here, so, but that's that master plan. They're keeping themselves isolated. Uh, so, what's the first thing I did? So, now, all of your MLS may not have it um, the way Glaver does. Glaver, Gra Glaver actually, and, and if yours does, then it works, trust me. Um, Glaver actually, first thing I did is I sat back to myself and I said, okay, what am I doing wrong here? Glaver actually, the way we've mapped Glaver, they actually specify one story. So the first thing I thought was, is okay, I know what I need. I need data. If I'm trying to solve for six, seven, eight, ten variables or anywhere in that neighborhood, I need data. Now, I don't want to be pulling up a bunch of custom homes in here. This is crazy. This is a separate area. That, that, that ain't the same. This is a separate area. I'm just not going into that master plan. I'm just not going to do it. Maybe you would, and that's okay. If, if you thought that was okay, heck, it probably wouldn't give you that bad of results at the end of the day. I don't know. But I just didn't. I'm kind of stern and stubborn at times. So first thing I did, though, is I took out one story. Now, I took it out because I know that Glaver specifies one story and two story. Um, so I can use one story as a variable. What's that going to give me? That's going to give me how much of a premium a one story sells versus a two story or above. So again, I can increase my data pool because I can I can make a variable to solve for it, but what that does is is all the other adjustments now there's more data to run and you're still solving for that difference. So uh, it's just the, logically it's the the right path. Now if you if you if your MLS doesn't specify one story, Michael's working on a special solution for you guys. I don't know when that's going to be on deck. So you need to you need to kind of see if if yours uh, if you have you know, play around load up a test file with one and two story properties for no other reason than to go into it just to see if in your variable list if one story is an option if it is then you're mapped uh, yours your MLS is a cooperative one that's allowed you to map but the first thing I did was I took out the one story ah you know what and I'm I'm silly sometimes I'm crazy I I left those parameters in there for uh, livable area and year built. Year built, you know, new construction. I don't want to trail out too far. I mean, design standards, stuff like that. So now I got 59 records, but I'm not done yet. Now I started looking at it. I'm like, wait a second. Wait a second. I said, th there's feeder streets all through here, and this is the same area. I mean, if, if I lived in Southern Highlands actually for. Uh, couple of years till I got tired of being landlocked feeling like I was out on an island all by myself but I did it when that master plan was brand new there was no commercial developments out here 
Um, so this area out here, same stuff, Blue Diamond Ranch, uh, over here you have these little par D tracks, and this is all the same stuff. So you know what? Except for up to Warm Springs. Past Warm Springs, you're all custom. So there's no reason. I could have roped it in. It probably wouldn't have pulled any data anyways. But I just increased, I increased my market area to where it should have been. Now, I don't necessarily have to do, even though I did, I did my 1004MC based on the same information. I mean, I had similar utility, 1100 or, you know, my 25% plus or minus. There might have been some different design in there, but I modeled out the adjustment. Now, look what happened. I got 115 records. Okay, you're, you're getting into happy town now. When you start to get numbers like that you're feeling you're you're stretching out those statistical muscles saying all right I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to get nasty now I I, I got data I got ammo for the gun you get those kind of numbers it's just the law of numbers it's how it works so let's go back to the Gandhi soft uh, your your data page where you should have the source as greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors so now here, I don't want you to touch anything yet. I just want to tell you something. So if you ever get lost, you know, sometimes you start, got a challenging data set. You, you start changing tolerances. You forget your place. Uh, if you ever come back to this pa page and click reload, that takes the same data you had and starts the analysis from scratch. Kind of like, kind of like the eraser, you know. If this erases everything you did and starts you from scratch in case you've lost your way and you say, dang it, when I started out I was close and now I've gotten so far down the rabbit hole I forgot where I am. But in this case, we're going to click upload because we're going to actually upload a whole new set of data and that's going to blow this out. And there's no reason for us to create a new file. I mean, I would have had in my file number in there. We're just going to replace the data. So now I want you to upload correct test one oh two oh seven two fifteen text correct test one I want you to load that property uh, file okay so now we we tabled and indexed that data I don't know that uh, I'm just gonna double check here I don't even think I used just to show you yeah I didn't even put in the listings pendings and contingents because I wanted to show you we had 115 there's 114 here So, you know, just so you know, that was the same data set that I have, minus one sale, and that's probably because I, I did something goofy with my polygon. So now I want you guys to go up to, back up to that upper right-hand corner, and I want you to click Analyze Pairs. And again, now even though we got a lot of data and we're feeling, you know, we're, we're trust me, going into this, you should be feeling good now. You know, we're not going to let you focus on the first things that jump off the page. Now, they might be pretty. If they're pretty, well, fantastic. But what I'm trying to get you guys not to do is to fall apart. <laughs> fall apart. This is data, guys. We're just handling and managing data. We're doing nothing. We're statistically modeling with some rule sets. That's all you're doing. And the power and the flexibility of that mentality, when you get used to it, is just... Uh, it's just crazy, you know. You you if you like regression, no problem. Uh, but you, you know, you you kick out regression. Uh, regression kicks out a number. You're stuck with it. Uh, you don't like it. You can change your variable list, maybe to try to attempt to rerun an analysis, uh, reload data. Uh, that's it. Um, you're modeling here. You you play around with the tolerance, add a variable, see if there's collinearity. I mean, as long as you start, everything is supposed to be validated as credible by the professional. So uh, just remember that. Um, so here we are. So, you know, right off the bat, you know, uh, we got no solution on bath. Now listen, sometimes, sometimes, you know, there's just, just nothing you can get. But remember what I did. We loaded up all the data. Remember, one and two story. And, and I didn't. I don't have one story in my so the first thing you do don't pay attention to this you gotta either prune or you gotta look at significant items in your variable list to address I know 
that well at least gut tells me that there's going to be a premium to a one story and a two story so I want you to go to add a variable first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in one story and you don't have to click you can click update you don't have to we're going to start playing around with um, uh, actually, let's go back to add a variable. We're just going to look through here. Listen, listen, guys, anything that's grayed out is either in your panel uh, or or it's not what it should be in your panel. But anything that's in here that's, you know, bolded black, that's a variable that's in your data set. I don't know how many times you can check the stats tabs, but, you know, you want to review this just to make sure you know, what kind of stuff I got in here. Now, I did SFR, so townhouse shouldn't be in there. I don't know what that is. That's see, but God love realtors, you know. You might be one yourself. Yeah, I get it. You, you know, there's no police on you uh, entering some information incorrectly, so it happens. But look at this one up here. This one usually, this one usually makes me at least pay attention. Additional livable area. Yeah, that that you know that that could be a casita, guest house, whatever. You know, even in the tract environment, we have those. Uh, casitas and stuff. So I'm I'm going to add that. I'm I'm, I'm going to add that in. Now I'm not. I haven't updated yet, and I'm sure we're going to have a lot of stuff here. I'm not going to deal with guest house. Now let's look at the stats tab. Let's highlight it and let's look at the guest house. So we got three records in there. Hmm. Okay. I just don't like the sound of guest house. I like additional livable area, but I don't necessarily like guest house. Actually, I don't think I like it uh, at all. So now, if I removed it here, none. I just say it's not significant, but I don't think I like it at all. Let's 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 play uh, with the submarket filter. You know what? Let's so let's go into up here in the upper right hand corner change button submarket. I want you to click that, and let's uh, let's go to add a variable. Let's go down to guest house, which which is what I just told you. I don't even know if I want to deal with it. So once you're on guest house, just just highlight no blue, and then click save. Now we added in one story additional live barrier, so it's updating. It's going to start running an analysis here, so you know it's going to start changing things. Uh, guest house is going to be in the panel, so I'll show you. We're going to take that out because that's just it's going to say no solution. You'll never get one. We just removed it from the variable list. Now remember, I'm slow walking this, guys. After I came back from that coffee break and I loaded up this data, yeah, I spent three minutes. I mean, I spent three minutes. And I got. I got to where I needed to be, and I was on to the next one. I did that eight-second ride, and boom. And that's what that's what you, we're going to get you guys up to speed. Just got to engage. So the difference between uh, a sub-market filter. Okay, so submarket. Listen, I've I've said this so many times. I don't even know why. But submarket filter. If you add it in there, you remove it from the variable lit. Or excuse me, you remove the record from analysis completely. If you remove it from uh, just your panel over here, you're just saying it's not significant as a variable, and you're allowing the properties to compare to everything else. Ah, uh, me and Michael are laughing, uh, like an old married couple here. Um, okay, so uh, now again, don't don't get scared. First thing, jump off the page. Oh man, no solution. You know, we got this noisy guest house uh, in there. Which look, no solution. Yeah, why? Because we look, there's no records in here anymore. We took that out. If I told you, don't get worried about what's on the page. I got 118 records now. I got a I got a boatload of variables. Don't get me wrong. You, you try to do this in regression, it's screaming at you saying, oh, no, you don't have enough data to be playing in this kind of league. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do. We do. Just different method. And I'm in control. So we, we, we're going to 
I want you to go to guest house, highlight it, drop down to none. That's going to remove it from the panel. Why are we removing it? Because it's just it's just taking up space. We can see there'll never be a solution. We removed them. We removed guest house properties from analysis. Now I'm not going to kick this bath yet. It's still not showing us the result. Now we've we've actually uh, played around. So now I'm going to, before I update, let's play with some tolerances. So we got a tolerance that defaulted in additional livable area. I'm fine with that. I don't like this additional livable area is elevated above my uh, my main livable area. I don't like that yet, but I'm not, we're just pruning. We're positioning ourselves. So we're going to, I want you to go to livable area. I want you to change that tolerance to 5%. What is a tolerance? Remember, guys, the initial process is just like paired sales analysis, traditional paired sales analysis, except we synthesized it with the tolerance. So I want you to think of it this way. We got two properties. One of them is 1,480 square foot. The other one is 1,520. They're identical in pretty much everything, statistically speaking. Of course, you didn't stick your head in each of them. But the 1,480 one has a three-car garage. If you assign a tolerance of, let's say, 3%, you're going to allow the platform to say, okay, I'll leave the square footage alone for now, but I'm going to extract out the difference between the garage. You're, you're giving some flexibility, which is real-world stuff. You guys don't always, maybe some of you do. Most of us don't adjust within 40, 50, 100 square feet, depending on how big your house is. You don't adjust for a couple of years of age. So we're allowing you to apply those pragmatic principles that you do now anyways in an environment uh, where you, you know, you're allowing the platform now to exponentially increase the amount of properties that could be paired to extract out other variables. Now, once we record those central points of value, the iterative method kicks in. It starts uh, reinserting those values for those differences and then it still measures out the differences in the tolerances. That's why I'm to letting you know everything's accounted for in the model. Every percent, every square foot of that 5% in that livable area tolerance is going to get addressed before the process is over. So your model is statistically balanced. There, it, we, we're not playing fast and loose with the numbers. That tolerance is addressed. And if we didn't do it that way, uh, you know, trust me, we'd be catching a lot of flack. So we changed our livable area tolerance to 5%. I want you to just, and I'm opening up the carburetor, guys. Lot size, let's go ahead and change this to a 1,000 square foot tolerance. A 1,000 square foot tolerance, uh, you know, a lot of you are probably laughing. You might not adjust within 1,000 square foot a lot either. Now, year built, though, that's, that's the standard default at four. Now, I'm new construction. Four years, you know, the it's kind of the... The newer you are, the more sensitive to the age you are. I mean, if you get into 40-year-old houses, hell, you know, 10, or heck, excuse me, <laughs> 10 years might not be a big deal. Uh, but when you get in the newer market, I'm a little more sensitive, and I'm, I'm, I still have to fight my own brain. So I want you to change that year-built tolerance to 3. So we got... 5%, now don't worry, they update. They, it's still going to look like you got 2%. Don't kill yourself. If once, it, once, once you plug it in, it's 5% and 1,000 for lot size and four years for year built. Once you hit update, it's going to update them. Now I want you to click update. All right, the hamsters are running around. They got calculators in their hands. I mean, now you know what? There might be some new people on here, so I'm going to take up some dead space. So right now, remember, guys, you can load up you can load up uh, as many listings, pendings, contingents, and sales as you want. The analysis right now we've got it limited to 500 sales for the analysis part. So if you you can load up 4,000 sales, it's just going to give you a little bit of a warning, and you need to come into your submarket filter and filter those down to 500 or less to do the analysis. And if you don't do that. It's just going to analyze the first 500 that are tabled and indexed, which might not be the most uh, relevant 500. Now we did that because, like I said before earlier on our webinar, we had you know we had some users that were roping in three, four thousand property records. 
we've done it in the past. You can do it. It's a huge resource hog, and it's actually, I mean, if you have special needs litigation, uh, if you're litigation support, we can probably work that out for you. We just don't want everybody doing it because it's literally billions of calculations going on. I mean, there's, you know, we got to keep the lights on at some point. Um, so, again, don't be scared about what's jumping off, off the page. Uh, because you're, we're still pruning, we're gonna we're gonna hustle through this. Like I said, I did three I did three minutes when I got back with a coffee cup, and I said, oh man, what was I doing wrong? So first thing now now we're gonna start chopping. We're, we're gonna start chopping. Okay, uh, bathroom's pretty good right now, so I'm not gonna chop that. This this is light. I mean, comparative to me, but we got we got no solution on gated. So you know, first thing, let's kick it. Kick. It hasn't shown a solution in most every different variation we did. So now we're, now we're going to start getting groovy, and we're going to start kicking stuff. And we're going to start eyeballing stuff if it's credible. Because we've, we've still got a whole ton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven variables we're solving for. Now look, when we kicked out gated, bathroom went to no solution. We liked the number before, but we don't like this. Also. That livable area for that accessory building, uh, silly. One story, no solution. I'm not kicking that no solution. I'm not kicking one story yet because you're just not, I'm not convinced that there's not a premium being paid for that. So you know what? Uh, bathroom's been acting squirrely. Now, I'm lucky right now. I, all my properties have uh, two baths. But I did have a comp I was thinking about using that was three bath. But we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second. So we're going to go to bathroom. I want you to go to the strategies, drop down box, none, and update it. We're getting rid of bathroom. We're saying, hey, bathroom, uh, acting squirrely or not significant, whatever you want to say, uh, we're, we're kicking it. And this is what we're doing. We're pruning. We're like, you know, we're like playing along. Now, wow, now, wow, look at that. Look what just happened. Now, this will make perfect sense to most of you. So... Primary drivers, bathroom, you could technically, that, that one can seesaw. I, I don't know that primary is a good word. Certainly not tertiary. I mean, it's, a, it's an important variable. Don't get me wrong. But here's the deal, too, guys. In an environment where we're solving for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 variables, 10 variables, I dare you to do it. I dare you to do it in most programs with any kind of confidence factor. <laughs> Other than ours, because we don't have, we don't worry about confidence factors. We solve for variables. We isolate stuff and we solve. And, and by goodness, if if that number is credible, under your rule set, they can be, they can be redone a million times, uh, you know, the same way. But but this is what you got to remember. Sometimes you're going to catch data uh, or a variable that's going to catch a variance or deviation, such as bath or gated. Now, if you solve for 10 variables fairly credibly though guys and you you start to apply those adjustments on the grid maybe I have maybe I use that property with the three bath now a lot of you might be saying to yourself I, don't, I wouldn't want to use it we didn't solve for it why not okay I solve for all the other major variables I mean I solve for every variable other than this bath now let's say I grid out five sales let's say I grid out four and one of them's that three bath now if that one with the three bath is sitting a couple thousand, five thousand dollars, eight thousand dollars higher than my three. If I apply an adjustment and I make a comment that even though we didn't solve for it in the model, uh, on a sensitivity basis, looking at the adjusted uh, properties, my other comparables, that that's where my adjustment was justified at. That sometimes paired sales on a microcosm of sales is okay. I, mean, I got a I got a wonderful lady out in uh, out back east. She does all high end stuff. Uh, she said she can't use regression. She'll get she'll get six sales over a period of three years, but she's dealing around in twenty eight million dollar properties. Uh, you know, she has no alternative. Regression models don't even work in her neck of the woods. So you can still apply an adjustment if it's not in your variable list. But I will, let's go through what happened. I'm a two hundred forty thousand dollars sales price. Okay. Got a nice premium for one story versus two story. You know, I'm 1,567 square foot. Definitely, I like the feel of a one story ranch versus a two story huffer with stairs. Um, 
But look at this additional livable area, and this is good. Now, <laughs> look at our real livable area. Those numbers are almost spot on. Now, let's all be really serious. Attached or detached casita. I mean, the utility and the functionality of it is pretty much equal. If you think about it, in a lot of cases, <laughs> which I made a joke last week about it having an in-law, uh, you know, you might the detached option might be the better way to go. A little more space, a little bit of yard between you coming in the door. I don't know, but my point is, is though on a on a utility basis, I mean, they're they're I mean the same hopper. So look at that though. You got additional livable area. We'd got let's say, and our regular livable area, uh, right around the same number. Now, I was 200, and Michael, Michael brought this up to me after the last webinar. Um, he said, you know, we've gotten a lot of results, too, that were in the 40s um, uh, as far as livable area price per square foot um, based on a percentage of uh, livable area. And, and Michael brought that up to me, and, and he's right. I mean, for the most part, I like to say that it's... Uh, 50 to 70 percent is your sweet spot, um, but you know, it, it just depends. We we do have plenty that get into uh, plenty that get into the uh, into the 40s, and and that's actually in the 40 range. But let's look at the totality, of all the adjustments, lot size. Uh, you know, five bucks a square. Yeah, okay, four to five. I said you could buy an acre out there for 150, 175, 200. So that I know that that number is good. New construction, you know, almost 15 to almost 20 grand um, for a kicker. Hey, you guys, if you do new construction like I do, there's always been that ghost variable. We can't, you know, you you attribute it usually to personal preference. Well, people get to pick out their own colors, uh, whatever. I mean, you know, the effective age can't run off that bad in a year or two. Well, you, you can solve for it now. You've got statistical support and evidence that, that shows uh, that that's, and that's reasonable. Less than 10% for a new construction premium, I'm good. 20000 to 24000 something for a pool, I'm on board. I mean, less than 10%? Great. REO repo, don't care. Leaving them in my model, though, and I'm going to, you know, year built. Okay, eighteen hundred to twenty six hundred. We're in the new, you know, we're in the newer market. You drive that car off the lot, that thing depreciates pretty quick the first couple of uh, months, and then it starts to slow down over the years. Now that does not mean that uh, if I were doing an existing property, two thousand nine, I might have a couple years where I'm saying well, that's negligible. Just because you have a per year is the same thing. Of the rule applies with the livable area. You've got a per square foot. You're still going to, I know you're going to do an appraisal and not adjust for 50 or 100 square feet. So the same rule applies, negligible difference, negligible, don't need to adjust. But now you've got the totality of all these adjustments really lined up good. I mean, if you look at the histograms, we got, I mean, look at lot size, for goodness sakes, 4,789 pairs. Who's going to argue with that? Livable area, crazy, 5,696 pairs. In the iterative method, we, we cascaded that sucker. Yeah, that's how many times. Now, a lot of you, okay, if you're new, <laughs> if you're new, I know there's people in there going, now, how's that possible? 5,696 pairs. You only had 115 records. Well, in the iterative method, believe it or not, if you go 1 to 2, 1 to 3, 2 to 3, 2 to 4, 4 to 3, the, actually the equation is 115 times... 115 minus 1, which is 114, divided by 2. So there's a total potential pairs in 115 property data set of 6,555. Guys, that's why this platform works. Paired sales analysis in the iterative method, the gold standard, something you can explain, understand. All, all that saying is, is, hey, we solve for everything, and at the end of the generations, Everything was solved, so basically every property could compare against each other. I mean, that's why the iterative method is wonderful. It's a great refinement tool. Now, once in a while, for kicks and giggles, if you want to see what solve once does, 
what is solve once? We've gone over this. I'll go over it real quick. Solve once means the first time that that variable gets a chance to solve for it with a minimal rule set. We do have a few rules set in place. We're not we're gonna we're not gonna let you rely on one pair. You know that's you can do that by hand. Put it in the addendum. This this is not that kind of party. So. But what you're saying is, is once you reach that minimum threshold necessary to solve for that variable, it doesn't go into the iterative method. So I mean, if you get a variable that you don't like what it's looking like, you think it's high uh, or low, you know, take it out of the iterative method. What does that do? It doesn't refine it down. It doesn't refine and continually uh, cascade against other properties. As soon as it solves for that variable, it stops. Now in that situation, it didn't really change it too much. But look at this. It went to 19 pairs. Why is 19? Because we didn't let it go into the iterative method. It dropped down our additional livable area, dropped down lot. I mean, some of these numbers still are not bad, and some of them are close. But look at, let's, let's make that solve fully again, and then I want to show you. So we had 19 in the first time it solved for that variable, which is very close. To what it does in the uh, refinement process of the iterative method, um, but when it pops back up, let's look at the different, the difference in the number, statistical number of support for that adjustment, the evidence. Third generation, 1,796 pairs. Now that number is dang near as close as it was when it first solved, but it's been refined, and it it was also in the refinement process it allowed to cascade with the other variables further which smoothed them out so here so you just you just you, we just we just now ran through one where and no listen I, I we could play around i'm not playing at this point hey i told you i get, i did it 3 minutes after that cup of coffee jogged my brain pruned out my stuff opened up my tolerances a little bit and when i got when i saw livable area and additional livable area in some reasonable ranges almost identical and reasonable uh, numbers validated. You know, garage a little bit high. Okay, I didn't have a. Di you know, that, not really to me. I mean, overall, two hundred forty thousand dollars for hundred or fifteen hundred square foot house, brand new. You know, look, man, it's tough to argue. I mean, I can go into the histogram. I can look at the frequency. I mean, my high areas of the candle. Yeah, we got some low ones down here, but you know what? I got trim two point five as a filter. You know what? You want to test something? Let's test standard deviations, and let's change that to, to three instead of two point five. Let's see what standard deviations. You're not going to have as pretty a histograms, but you still have a statistical filter, and sometimes it changes the numbers. You might like it better. Ha! Now you know you're getting the sweet spot. Look at that. We just applied a totally different statistical filter than trim, and everything stayed relatively similar. You know our additional poked up just a tight I mean the adjusted ranges are the same but your histograms not as pretty livable area is going to be pretty because you got a ton of ton of pairs you get a little bit more choppy when you get into you know this stuff so I'll change it back to trim point 2.5 I like that better I like my histograms I don't mind a little bit of skewness the numbers were pretty much the same anyways except for <laughs> I have the amazing opportunity to display to somebody that the additional livable area is almost exactly the same oh somebody just added market asked about market rate no on this one I didn't now there's a technical rate of three point you can click on market rate that change box if you want to look at it with me I called this area stable I'll tell you why. Yes, there's a technical one, 3.2%. I keep telling you guys, this is important to look at. Now, just because you see a technical increase doesn't necessarily mean it applies. That's just a trend line. But if you step back for a second and look at those candles, you know, I mean, come on. You can make the case that that's a pretty stable market. I mean, let's look at let's look at the last quarter, for example. And by the way, inventory's gone up a little. It's not oversupply. Um, quarter didn't make my case. Oh, look at half year. See, just because that's a trend rate doesn't mean you're not supposed to be the professional. Step back for a second and look at the broader picture. 
Don't look at that line. Look at those candles. And you can change, you know, change it to whatever you want. But you know what? Peaks and valleys, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm calling that stable. And on, on my market rate, uh, or excuse me, on, on my, my data, with increasing inventories and stuff like that, yeah, just because, you know, this high one up here is definitely, even though it's weighted, let me take out the weight, even though it's weighted, this certainly is definitely pulling us up. So I'm just not, I'm not calling that a rate. So I'm canceling out of that. And then, of course, you can blue hyperlink to define adjustments. I mean, I'm going to go through this real quick because you guys, if you've probably already seen this. So you know what? I additional livable area. I did at 65. I did livable area at 65. The same. I did have one with a 200 a comp with a 240 square foot casita. <laughs> no bath actually. Just a just like it was. It is actually weird. It was broken out separately. Uh, on tax records included in the main dwelling. It's attached, but they broke it out separate. So I I still give them credit for it. I'm just locking in, and I, you know, I tell you guys, I don't like that calculator. I'm rounding. I'm, people, people aren't out there. People aren't there saying, you know, oh, I'll give you eighteen hundred dollars extra for that bath. That's 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 silly. We don't even live in a really a quantitative, or excuse me, yeah, quantitative world. But we have to do appraisals based on quantitative rather than qualitative. So. You got to play the game, play with the cards you're dealt. That's what we do. And you know, I even round in here. I mean, nineteen thousand. I could say nineteen thousand twenty. I'm all right. I, I could do any of them. New construction. Seventeen thousand dollar kicker. There's my C one guys to C three or C two. There it is right there. Yeah. Let anybody argue that point. I got data. I guarantee you no robo computers whipping that number out. Yeah, I want to see a robo computer do a new construction variable. That's not happening. You can do it. And boy, when the end user sees that, there's you know, again, we go back to that. Nobody's going to want to get into combat with you when you got ammo in the gun. You're you know, they're bringing a knife to an RPG, you know, fight. <laughs> so go to validate adjustments after you save your uh adjustments. And this is normal. We got a we got a we got a bunch of people on this webinar. So, guess what? We got the hamsters running around. Analytics are getting you know uh, have to get developed and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, guys. And you know what? The robo computer answer, he's not going to do ocean views. He's not going to figure out additional livable area. That's what I mean. You guys, you don't be don't be afraid of this. Uh, see you. Just step up your game. Now you got to be practical. Listen, I was just talking to somebody that was dealing in a three hundred and fifty dollars square foot market. I'm not going to mention it. He's a, he's an awesome person. Uh, funny as all get up, been appraising forever. He's doing forty five dollars square foot for Liverpool area on, on and I I you know we were laughing. I said, oh man, <laughs> you're you're three hundred fifty dollars a square foot. I mean, there's just no way you're gonna ever statistically justify 12 percent uh, attributed to the primary driver and we're talking guys uh, in some high cotton uh, small houses efficiency because it's a metro area I mean it's uh, uh, so you know and, and and we laughed together because he realized it too and he said yeah I get it you know not a problem but I, I appreciate the honesty that he has I hope you guys know you can be honest with me has this platform changed my adjustment patterns? Absolutely. Absolutely. But you got flexibility here. You see something you don't like jumping off the page, you know, and, and all your other variables, uh, you can play. You you know, you you can and under these rule sets with this data file, you've got statistical support. Go to your web page screenshot tool, print that thing out, or not print it. Highlight it, copy it, right click, copy the image, and paste it right in your report. And there, there ain't just nobody, like I said, I laugh about it, but I'm serious. There, nobody wants to even pick up the phone. Actually, I don't know the guy's name, but I got a phone call from 
uh, FHA last week. <laughs> and you don't ever want to get a call from FHA. I've never heard from them in 20-something years. Why, why would I get a call now? And I actually got a call from a reviewer. Yeah, they water they water coolered around. Uh, they, they were looking at one of mine, and they were thinking about stabbing me until they saw that validation page. But they, they didn't want to stab me. Actually, they were looking at it pragmatically saying, well, God, Lee, the comps just adjusted out almost to the exact the exact dollar of each each one. Uh, that's just data, guys. Statistics. It works. Don't be going in anymore. Picking your comps intuitively. We do that. I talked about that last week. Subconsciously, we pick we pick comps in the back of our mind, knowing what our pre predetermined adjustments are. Don't do that, and then come back here and, and find pick the best comps. I assure you, if you see wide variance, you're gonna you're gonna end up finding something probably in that data that's gonna justify why that wide variance is gonna get uh, chewed up. We got some kind of interesting histogram over on that additional livable area, but hey, it's all data. <laughs> Doesn't matter what that histogram looked like, it's good. So let's go back to got to hustle, man. I burned through some time. I don't understand. So uh, I want you to go back to the GandySoft main page, guys. Okay, so I want to show you now. Last week we did a hard one. We're not doing that hard one this time, but we're going to do one that I want to show you some of the functionality you guys have here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to show you what you can do. So now I I I'm I'm, I'm talking to you real world. I did an appraisal and it's great when you can do these appraisals. I did an appraisal for a guy that bought a house a couple of years ago. Nicest guy in the world back from the Midwest. Um, he bought a house out here in Vegas now and, and uh, he's got two. Still got his house in the Midwest and he's actually wondering if he should uh, peel down. Uh, pe peel down and, and get rid of one of the properties. Um, so he's he spent a hundred and forty eight thousand something dollars on a remodel on this house that I appraised for him a couple years ago, and he it was twenty two hundred square foot house in Sun City, and he called me uh, com completely uh, aware. You know, he first thing he said was, "I want you to do an appraisal." I, I you know, you did the other appraisal when I bought the house. Um, you know, he said some nice things about that, which, you know, that's always nice. You know, nobody, nobody minds hearing good stuff about what you've done. Uh, and he said, you know, I want to know, is this the property I should get rid of? Or did, you know, and he, he was well aware. He said, did I, did I over improve? Uh, he spent, um, he spent a hundred and almost 150 grand on a remodel. And he wanted to know what what's the value of this property? You know, did I over? Because if I over improved, I'm just going to stay here, and I'll probably sell the the house back in uh, St. Louis. Well, let's let's go to create a new analysis. Let's get moving, and I'll find it this way. So, dude, let's let's mark this test too. Uh, effect uh, single family residence. The effective date January twenty fifth. So you scroll back to January, click 25th, click Save. Now I want you to go to the Data Change button. Make sure your source says Greater Las Vegas Association of Realtors, that drop-down box, very important. And we're going to upload. Uh, I want you to upload Test 2 Cleaned with extensive remodel. Now I sent you test two uncleaned. I don't want you to use that though. I want you to load up test two cleaned. And I'll tell you why. And don't worry about the uh the free wheel and speed guys. This is because we're all I mean there's there's actually this is probably the, one of the healthier uh webinars we've had. So there's a bunch of people that are banging on the server at the same time. No problem. It'll catch up. So Go ahead and, you know, we don't need to pay attention to the data. Go right to Analyze Pairs, the, up, the, the blue hyperlink in the upper right-hand corner. And I, I found the file, and I'm going to show you what I did. What you can do, functionality, like I, like I keep going back to it. You know, when you guys realize 
what you can do um, in this platform, the functionality, it's, it's just absolutely crazy. Now, again, don't be paying attention to nothing jumping off the page. I want to show you, though, what I did. Here's my pairs format, guys. Now, I charged this guy a good amount of money because he had, he had Taj Mahal. Only had 86 properties in all of Sun City. And I roped in, I roped in a huge landmass. Well, just Sun City, of course, but it's a huge landmass. Uh, but it's all, it's right there in the same area. So, I mean, it's all relative. Um, minimal filters, he's, he's one of the bigger models. So I did actually try to carve out some of those real tiny ones and the attached ones. I mean, I did a few filters, but only had 86 sales. So, now I charged him a lot of money, and he had a specific need. Nice guy. Uh, really wanted to know, what did, what's my house worth? What, I spent 148000 on this remodel. Um, am I going to get that back? Am I anywhere? Did I over-improve? 2,200 square foot. So, you know, right off the bat, I'm looking at him, you know, with one eyeball going, boy, you spent $70 a square foot on a remodel. That doesn't sound good going in. So I took the pairs data. I opened it up. I copied it to Notepad, and I went into Excel, and I pasted it, and I put it in, in my tab delimited format. Now, this guy's, this guy's paying me. There's only 86 records in my submarket. He's paying me. He's a nice guy. I want to do a good job. He's got an extensive remodel. So what did I do? I, I, in this case, uh, first of all, it's on the GPAR, so I, like, I love doing that. And the guy paid me. If, if, if people pay me, I love doing analysis. Hey, guys, I, I, do, I, I do million and a half dollar homes. I charge them $2,000, $3,000, and they're not that difficult. But I actually will, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll break down every statistical data point in the world if you're paying me. If I don't have to drive around town like a, like a fool, <laughs> you got me at the desk and you're paying me. Trust me, I'll, I'll, I'll do some quality analytics for you. That's not a problem. And I only get usually called from the people that, you know, really those uh, high scrutiny type investor types, uh, you know, maybe hedge funds or, or stuff like that where they got a high dollar thing going on. Uh, yeah, I'm not the cheap guy, but I give you so much stuff that, you know, you can kind of, the you know, kitchen sinks included. So anyways, guy's paying me. I charged him. He's a nice guy. It doesn't matter. He's got, he got an oddball property. I'm charging him, but I told him I'll find it. So what did I do? I, I pasted this, and I made another field. I cleaned every record, guys. There's 86. It took me about, you know, literally 15, 20 minutes going through the photos, um, and I made two fields. Now, there was this one that I thought it had a full photovoltaic, you know, solar system, and I thought it was worthy. It was only one. So you can see I cleaned all these records because, I mean, I was looking at them, looking at photos, looking at remarks. And I made a f one field called extensive remodel, and I made this, uh, you know, photovoltaic system, the solar, just to see, because I was going to test that too. But as you can see, extensive remodel, I had one, two, three, four, I had four properties out of that 86, extensive. Now, when I mean extensive, I don't mean a well-maintained home. I mean, this guy went hog wild, and I mean these other four people went hog wild. So extensive remodel. There was only one, believe it or not, with that, uh, with that solar system. So this is what you can do. You can paste your data from, from WordPad. Go in, in there. Uh, create a different field. As long as your column header, save it as a, uh, when you're done. Go to File, Save As. It'll ask you what type. Don't save it as an Excel workbook. That's not friendly. We don't like that. Go down to text tab delimited. You can save it. Name it. You know. That's it. Go to pairs. It'll load. You got to, this, you know, Microsoft Excel asks you a bunch of times if you want to save it in this format. You got to resave it, this, that, and the other. That's just clicking yes, yes, yes. Ah, and then it'll close. So we loaded the data. So you know what the first thing I'm going to do, and guys, I called this straight. I called this straight. Now, yeah, yeah, I got 2.27, but again, 
let's step back. Now look at that. I mean, that looks pretty stable. You know, if you really want to get, look at that, quarter. Ooh, that's actually showing a little bit downward. Half, down, year, going up. Uh-uh, no, I'm not messing around. I'm not doing that just because there's a technical. No way. I, that's stable market. So I'm not looking at this stuff. We got to prune. We got to do stuff. We got to play with tolerances. But what I do know is I created specifically. I want you guys to go add a variable. I created it. Extensive remodel. Now don't click update yet because we're not done. I want I want to see some things that that didn't pop up. City lights view. Yeah, up up here, up here, people pay a big premium for it, and up there, they're sitting in the very top of the valley. Uh, that you get some pretty extensive views. I want you to add city light view. You know what? This garage bay, I I want you to drop that down to none. But I tell you what's important, because garage bay, the this is agents being fast and loose with numbers, or semantics with names. Only thing that really matters up to me up there is a golf cart garage. You're not going to be able, if you start chopping up two different kinds of garages, uh, you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. So extensive remodel, that's what this, this that's what old boy hired me for. So I, this is, <laughs> the, I'm, I'm figuring this out, 150 grand, let's see what you're going to get, buddy. City lights view, we got garage uh, bays is going out. We put none on garage bay, we added in golf cart garage, golf view, that's a big deal. And we haven't messed with tolerances yet. We're not going to yet. Let's update the panel. Let's get this thing starting to look clean. Now, remember, 85 properties, guys. Look, we've got a ton. we got a ton of variables in that list. I, 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 again, you know, we're not opposed to regression at all. There's some wonderful ones. Don't use that automated one. That's that's not that. You're setting yourself up for danger, Will Rob. That's just bad, 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 bad. You use one that you can at least navigate. So, Okay, so, yeah, look, we got ugly. We got ugly. Don't like this. Ooh, man. Now, I know older people. You might, be on the, you might be on the line. You might be older. I know you guys appreciate going to the restroom. <laughs> Frequently, sometimes not out of uh, choice, but you're not paying that much for a bathroom. Not in this area. You know, maybe if there's gold-plated toilets and stuff, you're going to do that. So the first thing, let's open up the carburetor, though, guys. We got a ton. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven variables. One, two, three, four, four of them we know for a fact are going to be significant, significant. And we've only got 85 records. So, you know, come on, we got to... Don't don't be afraid of the first thing that flies off the page. Let's open up the carburetor though. Let's let's change livable area to uh five percent. And uh you know what, let's just see what happens with that. Let's just click a click update. Now how long did this take me to do guys? It took me like like I said, fifteen, twenty, twenty five minutes I did cleaning all the data. And you know what? I, I might have slow walked that myself. I was taking my time. Guy paid me. Guy paid me. So you know what? I'll do the I'll do the analysis. I mean, I'll, I'll do the analysis if you pay me, and I'll do it fully and thoroughly. I mean, no problem. Nice guy. I mean, it was still a tract home, but it, it did have a, a uh, and he did have a city lights view. Um, but you know, these are important things. So we want to want to do the right job for him. So I don't like that bathroom. I mean, you know, again, it brought it down. City lights, you know, that that seems high. That that seems high. I mean, golf view definitely not high. I mean, fifty, sixty grand up there. Um, just so you know, uh, our twenty-two hundred square foot ended up with about a four hundred and ten thousand dollar final opinion of value. So we're we're up in the two hundred dollar. Uh, or 180 for his property on a square foot. So we'll play around. Take our lot size up to a thousand on tolerance and uh, click update. 
I mean, I'm not too upset with some of these numbers. That extensive remodel, you know, old boy spent a hundred and almost hundred fifty grand, and we're, you know. But I'm going to get my rules set. I'm modeling. I'm if I get credible and re, you know credible results on all the majority of my variables, and something's sitting in there that is reasonable to me. Well, then by goodness, I'm dropping it in. Okay, we drop down city lights view. Bathrooms coming down. It still to me seems a little high. I don't know. I don't know. Now that I shouldn't say that. Now these are retirement. There, there's some. Let's look at the stats tab, guys. Yeah, these 2.75. There's one property actually. That's a three bath. Um, but look at the 2.5 bath versus the sales prices of the two and a quarter or the two. There's significant swings. Now 2.5 might be, you know, a full bath and two three quarter bath, because a lot of those houses up there uh, are the two bedroom and a den. But if you get into ones that are just 150 square foot bigger than yours, it might have that third bedroom and the third bath, which you know, for people that have visiting children or or guests, I mean that. Okay, I, you know, I'm not going to necessarily complain on that bathroom yet, but I'm not happy totally. I had this extensive remodel. I can go up to 60. I, I got no solution on lot size. So either I got to kick this because it's in my model, which I don't want to kick lot. Seems significant. So let's put that back to 500. Now I'm cheating a little bit because you know I did this appraisal. So you know I got, you know I got the road map. But I, I'm, I'm letting you play along with me to see that I do this stuff, there's nothing wrong. People say, you know, we were on these go to meetings and they say, you know what scares me is I made a I made a two percent change in uh my livable area tolerance and my garage went from thirty four thousand to uh eight. I like the eight, but what I don't like is that swing. And what you don't understand is is if you change those tolerances you're you're changing the properties that can initially compare to each other to extract out for those different variables. It's just modeling. The, you know what? The more you get used to doing it, you'll understand that under your rule set with this data set, it's going to generate statistical support for those numbers. Yeah, that's the great, actually, that's not the Achilles heel. You don't want the I push the button and I have to either accept that number or walk away and just hope nobody ever asks me about support for it. This is the platform where typically you 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 can get credible numbers for all your variables. Once in a while you got to kick out that one problem child. But that's the point. This one's flexible. Under statistical modeling and rule set, this and this has been going on for years. As appraisers, we just don't we have we're not used to it. We don't understand it. We don't like it. You don't like to see a swing like that. You say, well, you know, I can run that same data set on, uh, you know, uh, and I change a few tolerances and, and you know, wang -o. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, that's that's how it works. And the trick is, is intuitively you're going to figure out the sweet spots much faster the more you engage with the platform. So as you continue down the process, uh, you're, you're going to see uh, what you can do and you're going to get so comfortable at it that you're slicing and dicing like a ninja. So here, we're going to change lot size back to 500 because that no solution, that's crazy. I, I don't think dirt's too significant up there, but come on. But what we need, year build. Now, Sun City's big. Now look at this, 1988 to 1999. Now these newer ones, I can tell you, age is always going to show something high. Why? Because these newer ones, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but even even though this is the same area, they really hopped up the construction quality, and they got they got just you're going to get more views as well in these ones because the higher end of the development was the newer stuff where they built on the bluff. But nonetheless, let's open up that carburetor and see if we change our year built to uh, six year tolerance, and click update. And we're all, you know what, we're almost done, guys. Uh, so, man, I'm going to try to get faster. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Happy dance is coming. Now, guys, look at that. We just changed this. Here you go. Perfect example. Somebody cry, uh, you know, oh, I don't like that. I make a, a slight change, and it, it 
you know, got the number I like, but why? Statistical modeling, your rules with your data set, uh, if followed, will generate these. If somebody else uses a different rule set, well, that's not playing the same game. Either we're playing roulette or poker. If you want to play poker with me, here's my data set and apply my same rule set, and you will get the same statistical support. If you're playing with a different rule set, of course you're going to get different answers. There's nothing wrong with that. The, the math behind the statistics is the same. It's just a matter of you allowing more uh, pairings to, to go on in the first round prior to iterative or less. And sometimes more is better, sometimes less is better. But I want to show you, look at that. Bathrooms, dialed it in, six to eight grand. All right, I'm on board. 20 to 28,000, 25,000 for a full-on city view. Yeah, not bad at all. The number old boy was concerned with, he spent 150. Those four that I listed in my data set, yeah, they, but trust me, they, they went crazy town with him. They, you know, we're talking custom imported marble, all kinds of just, you know, uh, you're just, I like the guy. I wanted him to adopt me. I think he had way too much free cash. <laughs> but, um, you know, we got 79000 to 104000 uh, with, with the center point of ninety. Okay. All right. So let's, let's just, let's, let's step back for a second as appraisers. Over improvement. Now, he's, he, he brought this assignment to me saying, I want to know, did I over improve? So he's already knows, he knows going in, you know, it's kind of like that white elephant in the room. Uh oh, am I going to get all this back now that he's thinking about selling? But so let's say he spent 150, which he did. I don't know, 40% for functional, for over improvement, functional uh, obsolescence, um, lack of recapture of 100% of cost. That doesn't sound bad. I mean, heck. I can even input in my narrative if I go at ninety thousand, which is totally supported. I can even, which I did, guys. I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> if we did this appraisal, I gave him ninety. I gave him ninety. I didn't want to go to a hundred. I gave him ninety, and I put in my narrative that that would that would signify, on a holistic basis, about getting credit for sixty percent um, of the improvements. And you know what? When I put that ninety thousand and yeah. I did use three of those fully uh, extensive remodels, and I used uh, three that weren't extensive. And when I plugged in that ninety thousand dollars, it was scary. It was scary, guys. That th those properties that weren't remodeled lined right up, and there there was my sweet spot. Now, if I would have needed to throw in a hundred, yeah, I'd have done a different narrative, and I'd have said, you know, sixty six percent, two thirds recaptured. He lost a third. Uh, if that made if the hundred thousand adjustment made my other three comps, but ninety dialed them right in. Golf cart garage, nine thousand bucks, ten thousand bucks, not bad. Golf course, hey, that happens all day. Most of you probably do that intuitively because you look at numbers and you kind of get an idea. Now remember, I'm in a four hundred thousand dollar. He's not on the golf course, but in that price range, golf course, yeah, livable area, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, now his livable area is not in that 50 uh, percent, but that's because you know sometimes it's going to be less than that, guys. When you start to account for uh, views, I mean, this right here chews up ten dollars a square foot. This this right here chews up twenty dollars a square foot. This right here is chewing up, you know. So you can see where that's you know not always going to apply. Lot size. Oh man, three dollars, three fifty a square foot. Awesome. Pool, spot on, almost at twenty. Repo REO year built two thousand. Again, anything within three four years, I didn't adjust. I said, you know, that was fine. But if I would have went and used one that was six or seven years, okay, yeah, I would have added in twelve fourteen grand. And for design standards, that is just in that price range of market, not a big deal. So. There's the toughie, and that's what you can do in this program. You can make a field, clean your data. If you're getting paid to do it, I know you guys are like me, you'll say, hey, I'll do it all day if I'm getting paid. Not a problem. And you know what, guys? That's what I think is going to happen with the industry. When you're showing your work, you're going to eventually get paid more. 
I mean, if you look at if you look at the appraiser space, you know, the population of appraisers has dropped literally, you know, 35, 40 percent over the last six, seven years. Interns are, are you know, that doesn't even exist hardly anymore. Uh, when this market gets back to any kind of normalcy, there's going to be a there's going to be a shortage. And but more than the shortage, if you start showing, if you start showing your work showing the kind of professionalism that you all are and I, I trust me I'm the biggest fan of appraisers out there we're not worried about that robo computer that's never ever gonna uh, compete with you guys it doesn't have geographical competency you're in control it doesn't have anybody saying you know hey that fifty thousand dollar garage bay uh, ding dong computer is not reasonable it doesn't have anybody saying that it just says oh, well it's got a confidence factor and it's significant so I'm running with it you guys start showing your work like this, though, and you're actually going to get to where you enjoy it. Just, just engage. Trust me. Give it 20 analysis. Slice the dice. Don't be afraid to touch those tolerances. And when you start pre presenting stuff like this to your end user, uh, yeah, you're justifying those extra fees. Fees are going to go up because, look, they, they think you're a rocket scientist. And you are. I mean, you're intuitively, an appraiser is, you know, not bad. Just because some people, listen, we did things intuitively. I get it. But you start showing people data like this, that's, that's your justification for your fee increases, I'm telling you. And nobody, you get a bad CU score uh, because of model adjustments or whatever, they're, they kick, I know the process. I got former employees that work at Fannie now. I got friends at Fannie. The process is you get the bad score on um, model adjustments. It they kick it to a, a department. It's called triage, and there's a live person sitting there. And the the question asked when they hand your appraisal to that person and they hand them that model made by you know that robo computer is the question: Is the model correct or is the appraiser? You show them, they see this data in your report. You know stamp model's wrong, appraiser's right next so a lot of flexibility guys you don't have to accept a number I realize modeling scares people but it's not that if you if you engage it actually we designed it <laughs> kind of look like a video game to make it you know not as uh, imposing to you we want you to engage that's why we're gonna keep doing these webinars and we're gonna keep doing making you do analysis with us and sending data and we're gonna do the hard ones because you're gonna get the hard ones you wanna you just got mapped you're just starting out Try the easy ones first. Get comfortable with the easy ones. Uh, load up big sets of data where it's pretty uniform, and then you can start testing different variables, playing with your tolerances. That's stretching out your legs. That's getting ready for your workout. Uh, then when you start to tackle the toughies, you'll, you'll already have a little bit of that nervousness out of the way. So again, you know, we went over it again. Uh, you know, I'm going to do my web page screenshot since our, our PDF and PNG printers do not work, but you don't need it. If you're using Chrome, which you should be, Google provides our analytics. That's why Google Chrome works the best. It's an awesome browser. If you get the web page screenshot, two words, web page, screenshot tool, by, it's, uh, if you're logged in in Chrome, or not logged in, but if you're on Chrome and you search for it, it'll pop up. It's free. It takes two seconds to download. You highlight it, copy, look at that, right click, copy image, boom. I'm pasting that right in my report. I'm done. I'm done. You're done. You're in charge. You're the, you're the professional. You're in control. You're a model under your rules. We're not going to get beat by the robo computer. You have nothing to fear. All you need to do is we're entering a space where you got to show your work, some transparency. And I don't mean paired sales. I don't mean that. I mean comprehensive market analysis. You can do it on Excel. You can do regression based, uh, or you can go with the gold standard. Like I said before, in the ocean of all things regression, we're, we're the we're the island standing alone with the gold standard, the only one that you can explain in court intricately. Uh, there's no stepwise back, step step wise, step forward, step back process going on. No confidence factors to deal with. Paired sales, iterative method, simple algebra. Anybody can do it. My daughter's still learning it right now, and she's in sixth grade. So thank you guys uh, very much uh, for coming. We'll, we'll be running a gun in the night. And come back as many times as you want. Remember, bear's free for now right now. 
I mean, we're, we, hey, we know there's a learning curve. We don't even care. We haven't even figured it out. We want you. We don't want you buying this uh, out of a scramble. And people are scrambling. We don't want that. We want you to buy this because you realize what you can do with it. And uh, under your rule set with your data, if they apply that, as long as they're you know, uh, you know, understandable, you know, that's all that matters. So thank you guys again, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.